Good evening, доброго вечора. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Pavlo Gintov, and this is a preview of my upcoming program at the Ukrainian Institute of America. We don't have a date yet for this program because it is really impossible to tell when uh, it will be safe to have live concerts again in New York City. But um, if you follow the page of the Ukrainian Institute, um, you'll uh, have all the information about this event and all other upcoming events in their wonderful concert series that is called uh, Music at the Institute. Uh, this program will be dedicated to the um, Ukrainian composer Serhii Bortkevich, quite an intriguing personality, because um, while being quite famous during his lifetime uh, all over Europe, uh, after his death he was nearly completely forgotten and completely forgotten in his homeland, in Ukraine, for many years. Uh, just to give you an example, I'm a professional musician from Ukraine. I studied at the music school in Kyiv for 11 years and uh, never had I heard his name mentioned during my studies there. For the first time I uh, heard about him and his music when I was living here in the United States. So I will talk about his life uh, and his music. It's not really a recital, it's more like a presentation because I want to tell the story of his life and uh, I want to explain what exactly happened and why he was forgotten and why his music was not performed for so many years. But let's start with some music because it's always good to start with the music to give you an idea of what exactly I'm talking about here. So I'm going to play a short piece. Uh, it's simply called Song Without Words. Um, before I start playing, um, my piano is quite out of tune and I was not really able to get a piano technician here during the quarantine, so I hope you bear with me. Uh, Song Without Words by Serhii Bortkevich. The story about Borkevich's life is very intense. I'm not going to uh, go into many details today, but um, after being born in Kharkiv, which is the lar second largest city in Ukraine nowadays, uh, he survived two world wars, 
Uh, once, at least, he was deported from the country where he lived for a long time. Twice he was arrested. Uh, twice he had to flee and leave everything behind. Uh, he and his wife were lifetime uh, refugees and endured a lot of humiliation. Uh, his house, his family estate near Kharkiv was pillaged by the Bolsheviks. Uh, home where he lived in Vienna uh, was hit by a bomb during World War II and burned to the ground. And a lot of his music was lost in that flame, including a whole opera. Uh, even after his death, his music was still banned for many years because some of the manuscripts remained in Leipzig and after the World War II, uh, Leipzig came under the Soviet authority and uh, they found uh, his music in the archives and just kept it there until the fall of the Berlin Wall, until, until uh, 1989. Uh, Borkevich died in 1952, so you can imagine, for so many years the music remained locked up there and uh, even right now, some of his music uh, is still being discovered, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, just two years ago, a set of his preludes were published for the first time. So we still don't know, maybe there is some more music that we just haven't found yet. Um, I want to play a short cycle, it consists of two pieces, uh, it's called Lamentation and Consolation. Uh, he wrote four of those little cycles. Uh, Lamentation is uh, stormy and dramatic. And consolation is always rather uh, lyrical and bittersweet.
Uh, this Lamentation Constellation was dedicated to Moritz Rosenthal. And Moritz Rosenthal was one of the uh, greatest pianists of the time, the beginning of the 20th century, and uh, he actually played some of Borkevich's music, and moreover, uh, back then when there was still no sound recording, uh, recordings were made on those player pianos. Um, they were called uh, Vele Mignon. It's a sort of a technology that you can see in uh, Western movies, you know, in the saloons when they have uh, uh, pianos, that mechanical pianos that play on their own, right? So the sim similar kind of technology, and uh, thanks to that technology, we have recordings from the greatest pianists of that time, including Moritz Rosenthal, who recorded some of his standard repertoire, some Chopin, some Liszt, and he recorded one piece by Bortkevich. And Bortkevich was so thrilled uh, because he thought that Rosenthal immortalized his music by this recording, so he dedicated uh, a cycle of these lamentations and consolations to Rosenthal. Now, just one interesting fact about Rosenthal, uh, he was actually born in Lviv, uh, and he finished the Lviv Conservatory, so it's quite interesting, while Rosenthal was a citizen of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and the Borkevich was a citizen of the Russian Empire being born in Kharkiv, if they were born today, have they been born today, they would be living in the same country in Ukraine, both of them. So you can hear the Borkevich's music sounds very romantic, and uh, people say that uh, his music doesn't sound like a 20th century music. And some people love his music for that, and others criticize his music for that, and I understand both, but I do think that his music deserves to be played and heard, and uh, he deserves to have much more recognition uh, that, than uh, he has been enjoying so far. Um, 
he composed a lot of wonderful music, not only for the piano, he wrote symphonic music, he wrote vocal cycles, uh, he wrote a wonderful violin sonata, really one of his best pieces in my opinion, uh, and a lot, a lot of piano music. It's, most of it is available today and uh, people start to play it more and more these days, which is great. I want to play one more piece, it's called Midnight, and I feel that this piece is very much inspired by music of Robert Schumann, a great German composer of the 19th century, particularly his cycle Fantasy Stücke and the piece In der Nacht, in der Nacht from that cycle. Uh, uh, one very uh, specific thing that Borkevich definitely did not borrow from anyone is, in, is his uh, wonderful uh, long melodies, unexpected melodies. They sometimes turn and go to very unexpected places and always deeply lyrical. And even in this piece, The Midnight, which is rather stormy, still he, has, he finds some place for his wonderful lyricism. So this piece, uh, Midnight by Serhii Boltkevich.
Well, I hope you, I gave you some taste of Borkevich's music today. Um, as I mentioned, in the recent years, uh, his music has been performed and recorded much more than before, and I am very happy to be a, a part of this revival of his music. A few years ago, I uh, released a, an album of his piano works, and you can find it on Amazon, you can stream it on iTunes or Spotify or any other streaming services. Uh, I would recommend, though, getting it because, first of all, it has this beautiful uh, cover, which is the painting by a great Ukrainian painter, Volodymyr Orlovsky. And this is the uh, view of the seashore of Crimea. Now, uh, in, my, in my program, I will explain what exactly Bortkevich has to do with Crimea and how this actually connects to, my, um, to the time when I first heard his music and first encountered him. So, Volodymyr Lorlovsky is the um, Crimea, shore of Crimea. Also, uh, it has liner notes that I wrote myself, and uh, I try to be very brief, but quite inform informative. So, there is a lot of uh, different information, and including some file false information about Burkevich on the internet, and I try to be very specific and truthful in these liner notes. Even got some compliment about my liner notes in the, one of the reviews for my CDs, which was really, uh, really great for me as a non-native English speaker. Uh, I hope you enjoy his music. And I hope to uh, see you live at the Institute in New York City or elsewhere. Else, uh, elsewhere. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave comments and I'll be happy to, to respond. And for now, uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Have a good night. <laughs>